Hi, this is Dr. John Corey and this is the Two Minute Surgeon. Today we're talking about scarring. How bad will I scar? People come up to me all the time and say, John, how bad will I scar? How would I know? And I always respond the same way. It's not John, it's Dr. Corey. And when you go to medical school, then you can call me John. But it, wait, what? So people come up to me all the time and say, Dr. Corey, how bad will I scar? And I always say the same thing. I don't know, let's find out. Because scarring is a real individual thing, and there are some things we can do to make a good scar or a bad scar. We've all seen examples of a bad scar, and we've all seen examples of really good scarring. I'm not saying she had plastic surgery, but I have, would really have no way of knowing. But if she did, I'm not saying she did, but it's a really example of good scarring. One indication of how badly a person might scar is how did they scar before? Are there any other scars on their body that we might be able to see? I have patients tell me, I'm a really good scar maker, and I never know what that means. Does that mean they really are good at making scars so they look really bad, or they're really good at making scars and they're almost invisible? It's like when people ask me to turn up the air conditioning. I don't know if they mean turn up the air conditioning so it, it works harder and gets colder, or do they mean turn up the thermostat so it's warmer and to, I don't get confused all. Scarring and wound healing is a complex cascade of events that I learned probably 12 times in medical school and then forgot 13. But it's, in most cases, starts out as a pink thin line, eventually the color fades, it should be nice and flat, and over time is a thin white line, sometimes very imperceptible, almost invisible. Now I have patients come up to me and say, I think I keloid, and when they show me a scar, it's actually not keloid. It's a little lumpy, it's a little bumpy, and we call that hypertrophic scarring. Hypertrophic scarring is where it's bumpy but still has the shape of a scar. Keloid is where it actually no longer looks like an incision. It has globs of scar tissue, almost looks like someone has dripped hot wax on your skin if that's your idea of a good time. Patients also tell me they would love an invisible scar and I tell them I would love to go to all-you-can-eat pizza and not gain weight. Not that it can't happen but it's incredibly rare. So what do we do to avoid a bad scar? Because that's what people really, really are looking for is they don't want a bad scar. Poor scarring is a result of many factors. Probably the first of which is, just like real estate, location, location, location. The worst place for a scar is the thicker skin. Thinner skin usually tends to give us a smaller, thinner scar. We've all seen people have had little moles removed from their back and it turns into a big, ugly scar because the skin is so thick on our back. So there are a lot of factors. Location, tension, how tight is it? Smoking certainly affects wound healing and scarring. Uh, irritants, friction, is it on our belt line? Does our, does our belt buckle rub on it? There are a lot of factors that can give us a bad scar. Certainly another factor to remember is sunlight. If your scar or incision is gonna be exposed, while it's pink, it's still very immature. Keep it out of the sun, keep it covered, keep sunblock on it. And remember, some swimsuits also transmit ultraviolet rays. So you have to be careful with some incisions there as well. And genetics certainly plays a role in that too. One more thing you can blame on your parents. Another factor regarding scarring is ethnicity. And we've been taught over the years that darker skinned individuals have more of a tendency towards keloid or hypertrophic scarring. And I always find it amusing when pasty white people come up to me and tell me they form keloid when they really don't. So what do we do if we get a scar we don't like? Well, we can always do a scar revision. And what that is, is coming into the office, a little local anesthetic, recut it, restitch it, and most of the time scars heal up a lot better. Now the timing for that, I usually wait close to six months to a year to do that because some scars look really bad at three months and then at nine months they look pretty good. So we want to give it plenty of time. So basically, the question of how will I scar? I say, let's find out. 